Welcome to my channel Living Linux. In this video I want to have a quick look at Fedora 42 on a Raspberry Pi 5. So I found this post on Reddit and here someone says you can download it from here. Now I have to say that this is not an official release and I also had some small issues. So yeah, in my opinion, it's not fully stable yet, but you can start playing around with it. So at the moment you can download Fedora 42 and I think if you write it to a micro SD card, then everything should be good to go. I'm running from a USB stick, so I had to make this change. And yeah, once you have written the image, then it's a good thing to resize the file system because it doesn't uh, maximize the file system automatically so if you boot the first time then you can execute these commands to maximize it or as i said you can do it with uh, disks or gparted uh, immediately after you wrote the image to a micro sd card or a usb stick so yeah, once you have downloaded the image, you can write it with, for instance, the Raspberry Pi imager. Just choose use custom. And then you can just click on the image itself. You don't need to extract it. You can use it as is. The Raspberry Pi imager will do the extraction also. And yeah, as they said, uh, this is something you have to do immediately after you have written the image. So the easiest thing to do it is uh, to write the image on a Linux machine because that means that you have easy access to the written image. And then in that small partition, the boot partition, directory EFI and as I said, I'm running from a USB stick, so I had to change the root to def sda2. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. And then you should be good to go. So as I said, it's not an official release and I did run into some small issues. Um, well, it is known that the Raspberry Pi is not the best uh, single board computer to play YouTube videos. Um, I did install enhanced H.264FI, so I'm blocking VP8, VP9 and AV1. But it still had some performance issues. So let's just say, well, we'll let it run on 720p. And we still have a lot of dropped frames. Uh, the codec is AVC1, so that should be H264. But yeah, there's a performance issue. Um, the Raspberry Pi 5 should be able to play this uh, without, without any significant number of dropped frames. So I'm not really sure what's, what's the issue here. So let's do a quick test with WebGL Aquarium. So let's just try 5,000 fishes and then almost 30 frames per second, which is not bad. 
not bad. Oh, we're getting above 30 frames per second. Almost 40. Okay, not bad, not bad. So one other weird issue that I ran into is an issue with app images. So uh, yeah, let's see. I have uh, RPC F3, as you can see, it's an app image. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it working with uh, Vulkan or OpenGL and well, yeah. If you're going to run it with uh, software rendering, then it's almost like a slideshow. So not going to do that. But as you can see, the app image starts. Um, you can see here, I'm trying to run with Vulkan. I didn't change any of the other settings. And if I try to start it, then it's telling me that the requested feature is not available for some reason. Uh, which feels a bit weird because, uh, yeah, I am able, let's just say, to start look uh, yeah, some games PlayStation 3 games on a rock chip RK3588 and I was assuming that the Vulcan driver for the Raspberry Pi 5 was more developed than the one for the rock chip RK3588 but as you can see there is an issue with RPC3 now I also have Ether SX2 uh, as an app image. Uh, perhaps you see also this graphical glitch and usually it goes away if I do this and this and then it becomes stable again. Oh, well, sometimes it becomes stable, not always apparently. Uh, anyway, so if I try to start Ether SX2, now it's telling me there is an issue with the view setup. And I'm not really sure what it is because I was assuming if you can start one app image, then you can start them all. Well, at least then the extraction should work. Uh, so I extracted it by hand. So then we can go into the squashfs root. And then if we do app run, oh, then you can see that it does start in the end. And here I am. Uh, I did set it to widescreen. I did enable the widescreen patches and I enabled show frames per second. And yeah, we're running with Vulkan native resolution. And yeah, perhaps there is a performance issue somewhere in Fedora 42 with the Raspberry Pi 5 at the moment. But um, yeah, this is a bit underwhelming. So this is the setting with the original PlayStation 2 resolution. So perhaps you can hear the helicopter that is hovering above my house. I don't know.
Kratos had once been a champion of the gods. So this is the European version, so 50 frames per second. But as you can see, it can't even reach that uh, with the opening scene. Um, so yeah, I did see, for instance, like performance issues with YouTube playback. So perhaps there's also uh, some performance issue with Ether SX2, I don't know. Uh, again, this is not an official release, so um, yeah, hopefully they can uh, improve the imp performance because I have the feeling that, um, yeah, it, it's not using the full performance of the Raspberry Pi 5, at least that is my impression. So, yeah, as a last thing, um, I want to show you VK Quick. So as you can see, I already set it to 1080p. So there's some flickering in the screen. And I think that if I uh, lower the resolution, so yeah, that's good. So then I think it becomes uh, more stable. So yeah, anyone that wants to try Fedora 42 on a Raspberry Pi 5, then the possibility is there. Uh, yeah, I did run into some, let's just say small issues. I mean like, most of the things are still usable. It's not perfect, but it's usable. So yeah, if you want to help uh, the Fedora team uh, to make it run better on a Raspberry Pi 5, then start testing and perhaps also start reporting bugs. So this is all for now and I hope to see you again in my next video.